Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking for you this evening. Strong global queues helped the Lal Street rally. The markets regain all of Friday's losses. The Nifty and the Sensex up a percent, ending at a five-month closing high. Financials lead from the front today. Veteran investor Warren Buffett says executives at failing banks should suffer after a string of U.S. bank collapse. Apple accounts for nearly half of Berkshire's holdings. Shares are worth more than $150 billion. More turbulence in the aviation industry after go first. SpiceJet lands at the bankruptcy court. The NCLT will hear a case filed by SpiceJet's aircraft lessor claiming unpaid dues on the 17th of May. GoFirst seeks an urgent order on a moratorium as lessors move to repossess the aircraft. DGCA directs the airline to stop sale of tickets with immediate effect till further orders. The Central Board for Indirect Taxes orders field formations to begin the adjudication on alleged tax evasion by importers. Several companies including Vedanta, JSW Steel, MRF, Bombay Dying, among others, face show cause notices with the taxman hoping to recover more than 2,100 crores. Aditya Birla Fashion will buy 51% promoter stake in TCNS clothing for 1,650 crore rupees. TCNS, which owns popular ethnic apparel brands like W Aurelia and Folk Song, will eventually merge with AB Fashion. Loudspeakers to fall silent in Karnataka this evening as a fierce election campaign draws to a close. BJP moves the election commission accusing Sonia Gandhi of violating the model code with remarks on Karnataka's sovereignty. Pre-poll surveys show Congress may emerge as the single largest party. More than 50 people are dead due to ethnic violence in Manipur. Other states rush to evacuate their residents. The Indian Army and Assam Rifles say 23,000 civilians have been rescued so far. The Army also enhances aerial surveillance. At least 22 people drowned after a double-decker tourist boat capsizes in Kerala's Malapuram district. Local authorities claim the boat was overcrowded with 30 to 40 passengers. Eight people are in hospital rescue operations still on. Three people have been killed and three others injured after a MiG-21 fighter aircraft crashed into a house in Rajasthan. The Air Force says that the pilot ejected safely and has sustained minor injuries. A court of inquiry has been instituted to ascertain the cause of the accident. Russia launches a fresh wave of strikes across Ukraine ahead of the Victory Day parade tomorrow to mark Soviet victory in the Second World War. Civilians feared dead in more than a dozen missile strikes and over 60 airstrikes across various cities. Well, no Monday blues for the Bulls as they regained all of Friday's losses. The Nifty and the Sensex today gained over a percent, ending at five-month closing highs. Financials led from the front, with the Nifty Bank up 1.5%. Mid-caps gained in line with the blue-chip stocks. Reliance, ICICI Bank, HDFC Twins were the top contributors today. BSC companies gained a market cap of 2.5 lakh crore rupees today. So that was a strong start to the equity market action into the oil markets, oil prices recovering after declining for three straight weeks, fading recession fears and tightening supplies have lent some support to prices. A healthy U.S. jobs data also aided sentiment. Brent now around the $75 a barrel mark. Aditya Birla Fashion will buy a 51% promoter stake in TCNS clothing for 1,650 crore rupees. TCNS owns popular ethnic apparel brands like W Aurelia and Folk Song, and it will eventually merge with AB Fashion. Now, on the back of this, shares of TCNS were down 19%, while shares of AB Fashion was down 3%. Manglam is here to explain what this deal means, what brokerages make of it. Manglam. So let's talk about it in uh, you know a couple of parts. So what the deal was. Secondly, why did Aditya Birla Fashion buy it? Thirdly, what happens to the companies going forward and what are brokerages making of it? So let's talk about the deal at start. Aditya Birla Fashion, like you said, will buy uh, you know a stake in TCNS clothing. It's in two parts. One, they will buy 51% stake from the promoters plus through the open offer at 503 rupees per share. And the remaining shareholders of TCNS will get 11 shares of ABFRL for every six shares that they hold in TCNS. So if you look at the math, you know, TCNS shares have been valued at a steep discount via the stop uh, uh, swap ratio, as a result of which TCNS is down almost 20% today. 
If you take a look at the total consideration that uh, ABFRL will have, it's close to around 2,900 odd crores. Now on to the rationale. Remember, uh, TCNS has strong women's ethnic wear brands like W and Aurelia, and ABFRL itself targets about 80 to 85 percent of their ethnic wear revenue coming in from women's wear in the next couple of years, and their overall sales, 40 percent of which should come in from women's wear itself. They have been making a lot of acquisitions here and uh, they've acquired this company at a decent valuation as well, 11 to 14 times, two years forward EV2 EBITDA. On this, Nuwama says that only a successful turnaround of TCNS can create shareholder value and not immediate synergies and scalability. In fact, if you just take a look at uh, you know the additions that they've made to their portfolio over the last couple of years, they bought stake in Jaipur, they bought stake in Shantanu and Nikhil, 51% stake in Sabya Sachi. As well, recently, they had a deal with Reebok too. So they are plugging their gaps in uh, their portfolio to make a house of brands. And that is one of the concerns that Motilal Oswal has, that a long tail of recent acquisitions made by ABFRL, some of them are loss-making and haven't yet stabilized. So a prolonged phase of investments in these businesses and getting them to stabilize may weigh in on their EPS. In fact, this deal itself could have a potential 18% impact on the EPS as a result of which they've downgraded the stock. But here's the catch. The target price that they have, uh, you know, accounting for this 18% hit is 245, which is still above the current market price of ABFRL. So let's see how this goes. Definitely a negative for TCNS, but a positive for ABFRL in the long term. Mangalam, many thanks for joining us. Uh, that is uh, how this deal stacks up Aditya Birla Fashion and TCNS. On to a CNBC TV and exclusive sources say the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, that's the CBIC, will soon act on show cause notices issued to importers for alleged GST evasion. Now, the CBIC, we learn, has ordered the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence to implement adjudication orders. The latest move from the CBIC comes after the Supreme Court upheld the requirement of pre-import condition to claim IGST and GST compensation, says. Sequoia Capital-backed QMath has become the latest edtech firm to lay off employees while restructuring its management. The online math learning platform has laid off 100 employees in an effort to cut costs. Further, founder Manan Kurma has taken over as Reins, taken over the reins as CEO once again, while the company's current CEO, Vivek Sundar, will transition to an advisory capacity. But the big story this evening, there is more turbulence in the Indian aviation industry. Last week it was go first and now SpiceJet finds itself in the bankruptcy court. An aircraft lesser of SpiceJet is taking the company to the NCLT over unpaid dues and the case will now be heard on the 17th of May. Meanwhile, separately, go first, which had voluntarily filed for bankruptcy protection last week, is now seeking an urgent order on moratorium as lessers have moved in to try and repossess aircraft they filed with the regulator that is the DGCA. Let's also take a closer look into SpiceJet's business and how the airline is coping with its latest challenges. Just last week, SpiceJet had said it was working on reviving grounded planes with the help of the emergency credit that it got via the ECLGS scheme that the government had put on the table. Madiha and Ashmit stand by with a quick uh, health check of the airline. Uh, Madiha, to you first, uh, you know, take us through where SpiceJet finds itself and does it have enough to be able to fly through the current turbulence. Well, let me straight get to the airline's performance and I will refer to the latest available data from the DGCA. SpiceJet's market share has been shrinking every month. From 7.5% in November last year, SpiceJet now stands at 6.4% in March. This market share is much lower than 10.6% in January 2022. The airline's on-time performance has also taken a hit in March. It fell to 63.6, which is the second last spot, the last one being go first. SpiceJet's debt has also seen a sharp rise. The airline's total debt has jumped to nearly 8,200 crore rupees as of September 2022. But things looked hopeful when SpiceJet reported a profit of 110 crore in the third quarter of FY23, which was a big jump from 42 crore in the same quarter in FY22. Uh, now let's talk about SpiceJet's fleet, which is the key component of an airline's business. SpiceJet says it has 76 planes, of which 25 planes are on ground, mostly due to supply chain issues. Now important to note here that majority of SpiceJet's planes are on lease. So clearing lessor's dues becomes crucial here. Last month, the largest lessor, Carlyle Aviation, converted $100 million worth of outstanding dues into equity. While speaking to CNBC TV18 in March, SpiceJet CEO Ajay Singh had said the airline 
and is exploring debt conversion option with other lessors as well. But right now we don't have much clarity on how much money the airline owes to lessors or other operational creditors. But we will continue to find more on the outstanding news and where the airline stands in terms of payments. Madhya, many thanks for joining us. In fact, uh, staying with that story, Ashmit is here now with uh, uh, what transpired at the NCLT today. Ashmit, take us through what happened at the NC NCLT with respect to SpiceJet. Well, to begin with SpiceJet, the concern that has been expressed is by uh, an aircraft lessor by the name of Air Castle, an Irish-based lessor. Uh, the concern they've expressed is on account of unpaid dues, and on the back of that, they've moved a Section 9 application, which is to seek a, uh, a CIRP process to be initiated, a bankruptcy process uh, to be initiated with respect to SpiceJet, the airline. This would be fresh concern. They have been facing concerns on the likes of uh, creditors such as Credit Suisse. They've reached some form of uh, settlement with them. That has been going on in the background. Now, we also have uh, an, an aircraft lessor moving the NCLT. Importantly, the NCLT, number one, has agreed to hear this application, and number two, has issued a notice uh, to the airline. The airline has about a week's time to come back with a response on whether or not there is some form of settlement, there is some form of resolution, where is the, where the, whether there is any scope for adjustment uh, between the lessor on one hand and the airline on the other, and within a week's time, they'll have to give their clarity. The reason being that May 17th, which is Tuesday of next week, is when the NCLT will resume hearing in this case and will begin to expect more clarity from both sides, from not just the lessor, but also the airline. May 17th, a key date there for SpiceJet, the airline. All right, Ashmit, many thanks for joining us. Now, veteran investor Warren Buffett addressed shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway at the annual general meeting this weekend. Buffett has called for punishment for executives at failing U.S. banks, where he sees growth and returns for investors. Prashant is here with a quick wrap of Buffett's big bets. Uh, legendary investor, the Oracle of Omaha, addressing shareholders at the Berkshire Hathaway uh, annual meeting and of course uh, everyone wanting to hear what Buffett has to say about the world and more importantly his bets Prashant. Oh, absolutely, Shireen. I mean, it's an annual ritual uh, for investors and business folk from around the world, isn't it? Uh, listening to Warren Buffett and, of course, his uh, partner, Charlie Munger, as they engage in what is a free-flowing discussion with shareholders at that uh, AGM. I mean, you know, no subject is off limits, and that is what, it, uh, what, what makes this event uh, one of its kind and so interesting. The Q&A this time was three hours long, so it was always going to be hard to pick and choose for this piece here. But here are a few things that I found interesting. Uh, you know, the big talking point in markets for a while has been U.S. bank failures and the potential for contagion. Buffett was clear that bank management should be made to pay. Suffer is the word he used when banks go under, repeating his long-stated view that incentives in the banking industry were messed up and it leads to just too much risk-taking and hence bank failures. While he praised the government for stepping in uh, and saving depositors, he did say that the messaging could have been better. Depositors were never at risk, and that should have been made clear from the word go. Now, Buffett is famous for talking up companies he owns large stakes in. Uh, Apple is on top of that list right now. Berkshire owns 6% in Apple, and Buffett was all praise for the company, calling what they make, the product ap Apple makes, as extraordinary. Now, I found this uh, interesting. Berkshire, remember, recently sold its big stake in the world's largest chip maker soon after buying it. I mean, I'm talking about Taiwan Semiconductor. Now, this is not something which uh, Berkshire and Buffett both are known to do. He explained in, uh, by saying this, and I quote, Taiwan Semiconductor is one of the best managed and most important companies in the world, and you'll be able to say the same thing 5, 10, or 20 years from now. I don't like its location, though. I mean, his reference, obviously, being to China and the U.S., facing off on Taiwan. Does value investing work? Uh, is, is, it, is its use diminishing or does it remain ever as useful as a method of investing? Buffett and Munger had different views on the matter. Munger saying, and I quote, I think value investors are going to have a harder time now that there are so many of them competing for a diminished set of opportunities. My advice to value investors, according to Munger, is to get used to making less. Buffett, though, disagreed in his own Style, He said, Charlie has been telling me the same thing the whole time we've known each other. What gives you opportunities is other people doing dumb things. And there's been a great increase in people doing dumb things. And that's where the opportunity comes from. 
Now, Charlie Munger has been known to be a big admirer of Elon Musk. Uh, and in response to a question in his usual inimitable style, he quipped, and I quote, Elon Musk overestimates himself, but he is very talented. Uh, he goes on to say Musk wouldn't have achieved what he has in life if he hadn't tried his unreasonably extreme objectives. He likes taking on the impossible job and doing it. Now, just to wrap this up, while Buffett and Munger are known for their business and investing records, many around the world also look up to them for life lessons. Buffett is 92, Munger is 99. So I will end this piece with Buffett answering a question on living your best life. He said, and I quote, you should write your obituary and then try to figure out how to live up to it. Back to you. Owning banks, events will determine their future. And you've got politicians involved. You've got, you've got a whole lot of people don't really understand how the system works. Uh, and I would say that you've had something less than a perfect communication uh, between uh, uh, various people and the American public. So the American public is probably as confused about banking as ever, and that has consequences. Our criterion, our criteria for Apple is different than the other businesses we own. It just happens to be a better business than any we own. And we put a, a fair amount of money in it, but we haven't got more money in it than we've got in the railroad. And Apple is a better business. Our railroad is a, a very good business, but it's not remotely as good as Apple's business. It, uh, uh, Apple you know, has a position with consumers where they're paying, you know, maybe they pay 1500 bucks or whatever it may be for a phone. And these same people pay $35,000 for having a second car. And if they had to give up a second car or give up their iPhone, they'd give up their second car. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary problem. We don't have anything like that that we own 100% of. There's been some tension in the economic relationship of the United States and China. I think that that tension has been wrongly created on both sides. I think we're equally guilty of being stupid. If there's one thing we should do, it's get along with China. And we should have a lot of free trade with China in our mutual interest. And I just can't imagine. It's just, just so obvious. There's so much safety and so much creativity that's possible. Well, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger there on uh, a whole host of issues, including the U.S. and its relationship, fraught relationship with China. You're watching Business 363. Travel portal Make My Trip is betting big on artificial intelligence. The company has collaborated with Microsoft's cloud unit Azure. Make My Trip will now provide users personalized travel recommendations and voice-assisted booking in different Indian languages. The beta version has been introduced in English and Hindi. To talk more about the company's foray into AI and the travel and tourism landscape, we're now joined by Rajesh Magar, the co-founder and group CEO at Make My Trip. Rajesh, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You know, Generative AI has been the buzzword now since ChatGPT's launch, but uh, we've been looking for used cases specifically relevant to the Indian context. And I want to understand from you what you hope to do with this in collaboration with Microsoft. What is the aspiration? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Shireen. Uh, pleasure as always as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've been actually at it for some time. I'll tell you a little bit of a background to this before I come to the, the solution that we have just put it out. Um, you know, uh, we've been so trying to solve the problem to get, let's say, next 100 million, the tier three, tier four city users who are far more comfortable, as we have found, you know, uh, from our sort of uh, surveys, trying to get consumer insights from those markets. They're far more comfortable transacting, uh, you know, in the in the native language, in their local regional language, uh, in a more conversational flow, uh, rather than just, uh, you know, only sort of going the vernacular way. See, this is our, uh, this is our take two, uh, you know, to solve that problem. Our take one has already 
been there for a while. It's been live. So we've been on, on, on our platform. If you go and see, you can actually shift to Hindi language and Tamil language uh, for flight bookings already and even for the hotel bookings. Uh, but they, they, they all basically just translating from English to, you know, uh, regional language, Hindi and, uh, and Tamil. But the flow remains the same. So, you know, and the, the difficulty there is that for right. these users, um, why, while one barrier is resolved with that, the, the other barrier still remains, which means that, you know, because the keyboards are pretty complex, mm. uh, the language keyboards are pretty complex, uh, you know, and therefore we haven't really seen the adoption, the same adoption, uh, you know, as we were expecting. So, you know, so, so now with this new technology, so generative AI, you know, the language models have become very, very rich. Uh, and then the second thing that has happened is right. that the voice and text uh, sort of uh, interaction has also become pretty rich. So leveraging that, we thought it might be a very mm. good use case for us to be able to make it even more simpler and easier uh, to bring in voice command into the flow and then give the result as appropriate, uh, you know, in the form of text, and then get the the information again on voice com uh, command from uh, in a in a conversational flow from the customer, hmm. and then you know, into QR code and just uh, you know using using that uh, get the customer to pay, and then you're done. So you know, which is which uh, you know what we believe now this take two of ours, uh, you know, is going to make or remove that second barrier. You know, where you're more comfortable probably, mm. you know, speaking uh, a more local language rather than just typing. Uh, and, and and with that, uh, yeah. you know, life will become very, very simple. Well, so Rajesh, you know, I want to understand from you, uh, you've obviously been working in close collaboration with Microsoft to put this out. Uh, what's been the development period for you to take this uh, live? You are still in the beta version. How many languages do you hope to cover uh, through this assisted voice solution that you are launching today? Uh, and eventually, what does it mean at the back end, Rajesh, from a productivity perspective and a people perspective as well? Yeah, no, very interesting questions, both of them. So let me just take one by one. Uh, so in terms of just time taken to work uh, very closely with Microsoft on this, and this is, my, mind you, uh, this is not the open source AI, you know, that is available to the whole world. This is a Microsoft in their own confined uh, uh, environment. They also have an enterprise product for this, which is like, which offers a suite of services uh, all in, in, in sort of one place. And, uh, and we have done the integration with, with that, uh, uh, you know, with uh, working closely with Microsoft. It hasn't taken actually a, a whole lot of time because the integration was very, very uh, smooth and easier. It just took us two to three weeks to sort of uh, get the whole thing going. Um, and to start with, we, we have just uh, gone out with uh, two different use cases, one for the flight booking and the other one for the, for the trip uh, planning booking for our packages product. Uh, again, in the conversational mm -hmm. chat flow uh, in, in English and Hindi. And then we plan to cover more uh, regional languages. In fact, uh, you know, there's, there's this one that is sort of uh, uh, already in the works is in the Bhojpuri language, believe it or not. Uh, and it's, it's quite interesting. And the, okay. the, the, mo the, the most interesting part is the accuracy level, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to, the machine being able to catch the colloquial local version of the the spoken regional language uh, and and producing accurate results okay. so first you have and because see otherwise the accuracy will not come that was the problem in the previous language models uh, but not on this one so we are getting about 95% accuracy here uh, and that would be our plan so our plan will be to roll this out to in uh, hindi and english first um, you know we've just uh, uh, gone with beta launch with 5% of our traffic ramp it up as we get more insights, fine tune it, and then sort of come up with the other languages. And, you know, replicating it with the other languages more and more uh, won't be that uh, difficult and won't take, uh, won't take that much time. Um, now, on the back end, coming to the second question, on the back end, on the productivity uh, side of it, it's very interesting. See, the, you know, we have a, we have a channel, um, you know, actually all women uh, powered channel called Holiday Experts for our uh, packages product you know, to help consumers to do the trip planning, you know, and, and, and right now that is all mm. offline, on call. there's so much of back, back and forth that happens before, 
a lead gets converted into actually sale, it takes at least about three, four interactions. So this tool now uh, is okay. going to solve for at least two steps, uh, uh, you know, for them uh, and convert that, you know, to be able to answer all the basic questions that you might have as part of the trip planning. Because, you know, with the, you know if you mm. can just, just imagine if there is any customer who's thinking of just planning a holiday, he or she doesn't really know where to go, you know, that's really the start point. And then from there yeah. you start uh, for basic questions before you sort of, you know, get all the basic questions answered, get to a mm. stage where it becomes a warm lead, if you will. And then at, that is the stage when the, you know, the right. human intervention can come in. And, and you know, this whole, uh, our travel experts can sort of uh, take it from there and then, you know, just yeah. uh, just eventual conversion done. So I, mm. I think it's going to help them uh, from co consumer point of view, it's definitely going to help, uh, you know, uh, on the experience side. And on the on the internal side, at the back end side, it's going to help our travel experts to be able to mm. just do it more efficiently. Okay. Uh, you know, Rajesh, before I let you go, uh, there's a lot that's happening in the aviation space. We've uh, seen go first, of course, halt operations. The matter is now at the NCLT today. There's a notice that's been issued by the NCLT to SpiceJet as well. SpiceJet also dealing with grounded aircraft at this point in time. Uh, airfares have skyrocketed on the back of these uh, developments. Uh, what are you seeing at this point in time? And do you believe that there is room for rates to move even further up? Well, I know, I know this is the development that's happened, uh, you know, recently, and it's a, it's an important development in the in the market, you know. So the way I see this is that uh, obviously we'll have to wait and watch to see how this process goes. Uh, you know, I'm still uh, hopeful and optimistic that you know there will be some support coming. Uh, let's say go uh, first way, and then you know, given that they've been, you know, out in the uh, sort of uh, public to to you know, reassure and make the commitment that they want to sort of run and operate the, the airline. So if they are able to get some relief, uh, let's see how it goes, because, you know, from there only the, the journey will start. But in terms of just, uh, you know, fares going up, uh, you know, of course, if there is going to be, uh, you know, sudden supply sort of uh, taken uh, off the off the market, there is going to be temporary impact on fares. I, I think it's pretty uh, normal and logical, but I think it's going to be short term. Uh, to be honest, because the you know the mm. amount of market share that uh, that Go had was small, you know, mid single digit, and, and I don't mm. think it'll take much time yes. for you know, the other players in the market to be able to deploy more planes in those sectors and, and have more capacity and bridge the gap between demand and supply. So, uh, but if this happens to be a travel season uh, um, uh, quarter. Um, so, you know, temporary because it might take some time for, for uh, other partners to sort of deploy more planes. Um, but till the time there is a possibility that the fares could go up uh, temporarily, but hopefully, uh, you know, we'll settle down soon. Well, you know, we would have liked to continue this conversation, Rajesh, but I do know that you're in your silent period. We are, of course, awaiting Make My Trip uh, uh, quarterly numbers. So we'll, we'll check back in with you uh, once your numbers are out so that we can have a more detailed, specific conversation about the financials as well. Rajesh, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us and congratulations uh, on your new launch. We will take a break here on this edition of Business 360. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news continues when we return.